My name is Travis Henry, and on behalf of uh, Pastor Mitch Maloney and wife Sharon Maloney, on behalf of the Board of Directors for Real Life Village, it's an honor to welcome you here today to this ribbon-cutting and groundbreaking ceremony for Real Life Village. As you know, Real Life Village was formed for the purpose of providing living facilities for adults that suffer from, learn, uh, from uh, intellectual disabilities, and, uh, and so the goal is to be able to provide housing and care and uh, support uh, for individuals that uh, that have those disabilities and so I cannot understate the importance of the event today the significance of this event you all know the quote uh, that Neil Armstrong gave when he first stepped foot on the moon and he said this is one st small step for man and one giant leap for mankind this is a small event today for us but it is a giant leap for those at, that are seeking to provide care and, and facilities for those that suffer with these disabilities. And so we welcome you here today. Thank you for coming out on this hot, humid day. We're excited to have Channel 3 here. We're excited to Steve Hartline for offering uh, Mix 104, is streaming this as well. And so we're grateful uh, for that. There's some individuals that we want to recognize here, uh, some distinguished guests that we have. First of all, we have our county mayor, Gary Davis, is here. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for being here. We have the city of Cleveland mayor, Kevin Brooks. We appreciate you being here as well. Uh, we have uh, from the city, we also have uh, uh, Joe Fivus is here, and Jonathan Job. We appreciate you gentlemen being here as well. We have our county commissioner, uh, Bill Winters, is here. Thank you, Bill, for being a part of this as, as well. Uh, I want to recognize uh, the board of directors for this organization. We've been working for about a year uh, to get to the culmination of this day, and so I want to recognize uh, each of them. First and foremost, Mitch Maloney, who is the president of Real Life Village. I'm going to ask each of you to stand, if you would, as we go through these. And his wife, Sharon Maloney. Uh, Sharon, if you would, please stand. We have my good friend and treasurer is Ed Brown. So, Ed? Yeah. Yeah. We have Brent Maloney. Uh, so creative. He is the public relations manager. Brent, thank you for being here. Brent lives in Auburn, so War Eagle to Brent. And, uh, <laughs> and, and oh, man. Angie Conine, who serves on the board as well. We think you'll be hearing from her here. It's Del Hughes. Uh, thankful to have Del here today as a board member. Esmeralda Lee is a board member as well. We're thankful for her. Uh, Pastor Kelvin Page, pastor of Westmore Church of God. Pastor, thank you so much for being here. My good friend, Barry Ray, he is a board member as well. Barry, where are you? Uh, we thank, uh, He's back there in the back. Thank you so much for, for being here. Jason Robinson is a good friend, and he is here as well this morning. Jason, good to see you. And my pastor, Dr. Mark Williams, pastor of North Cleveland Church of God, thank you so much for being here, pastor, as well. Uh, please give them a hand of applause. I also want to take just a moment and to thank two very special people. Uh, the first of all is Ron Ogle. Uh, Ron is an incredible individual. We're so grateful for him. He's served on the board for the past year. He's going to move forward to serving as a consultant. And in many ways, we would not be here today, but for Ron and his wife and their commitment uh, to this ministry and to this effort. So Ron, we're so grateful for, for you. Thank you so much. And for those of you that know the Maloney's, you know that nothing they do starts without prayer first. And so, accordingly, it, it's altogether fitting uh, that this board would have a prayer coordinator. And so, we want to recognize Sheena Newman. She, Sheena has served on the board for the past year. She will continue to serve as prayer coordinator uh, for the organization. So, we're so grateful uh, for that. And perhaps two of the most important individuals that are here today the most influential individuals that are here today are Brandon Maloney and Jonathan Maloney. Please help me. Brandon, Jonathan, we love you both. We're so thankful for you both. Uh, we love the Maloney family, every one of them, but I got to say Brandon and Jonathan are my favorites. It doesn't matter. <laughs> What kind of day I've had, what I've gone through, as soon as I see them, they make my day better. Their joy is just infectious, and we're so grateful uh, for you all. And so uh, we, you all have your itinerary, your agenda here, and we're not going to introduce each speaker for the sake of time. We will just flow uh, through this, and you will see uh, those there, and you can follow along with your agenda. Let me open with prayer. 
Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just stop today in this busy day and we give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to minister uh, to, to these folks today. God, I pray for the Maloney family. Lord, I thank you for their obedience, for their commitment to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for their courage to follow through with this vision that you've placed in their hearts. Lord, thank you for Brandon and for Jonathan. Thank you, Lord, for their friendship. Thank you, God, for their love. And Lord, how they have revealed to us this need for so many. And Lord, thank you for the privilege that it is that we can be a part of this ministry. I pray, God, that your hand will be upon this. Lord, that you will be glorified and honored in everything that we do. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Pastor Maloney. First of all, I'm overwhelmed by this turnout for a groundbreaking and ribbon-cutting ceremony. And uh, so uh, those of you that are still out in the sun, come in under the shade, especially on this side. Uh, you get sunburn out there. We're going to be done in 20 minutes, and then we're going to go up. Uh, for a meal in the, what's it called, the atrium? Commons, Commons area. Commons yeah, and uh, so, <laughs> what, Commons base? <laughs> it's, it's Commons, whatever it is, so. <laughs> lobby, <laughs> no, huge, biggest lobby in the world. But uh, yeah, so we're thr thrilled that you're here. And uh, what, what we're gonna do is share just about three minutes uh, of mission and vision. Uh, in 1990, November 9th, 1990, uh, we had two new perfectly sound baby boys that were born into the world. And they were, you know, just coming along and growing and things were really good. But at some point, they took a turn and it kept turning. And so we had a lot of different diagnoses over the years. And uh, so from my perspective, you know, people would say, how are the boys doing? As they were growing, oh, they're doing good. How are they doing in school? Oh, they're good. And at some point I'm lying, you know, and realize that they're not doing so well. And so as they grew up, we, they didn't know exactly what it is. They do today. They know that they have a condition that is called autism. And uh, Sharon is going to uh, share and I want her right now to talk a little bit about what she wants to say and then I'll finish up with where we're going but we never ever uh, tried to uh, put the boys in a secondary position they are always out front and uh, they love God uh, Brandon's the preacher Jonathan is the worship leader <laughs> and I will tell you this one year for Christmas all they wanted was a pulpit with a platform and so Ron Heil who is a craftsman who made the first pulpit for the new sanctuary that we built, uh, made a pulpit for them with a platform attached. And it's made out of oak, and it's heavy. And when they were smaller, it was easy for not easy for them to move. They can move it today, but not very far. But uh, they, they love the Lord, and they love all of you. So Sharon, if you'll take over. They've actually moved everything in our house around. <laughs> Holes in the walls, dents in the refrigerator, etc but some of y'all know about that in your own situations. But this is just amazing and overwhelming to see this turnout today. Thank you so much for coming because I know that pretty much everyone here has a super busy schedule. So thank you for sacrificing time to be here. We want you to know that this is not just for our boys and I'm sure my husband will talk about that, but this is for every parent who is interested and in seeking for a place for their adult children who d feel they don't have the option that they're looking for. And we understand the worry and the concern, to say the least, the concern, the worry, the heartache of that. And so this is maybe not, the, today's not the very beginning of a vision that started like Travis said about a year ago, we started working on it, but this is the next step. And then we go to fundraising. And so in the scripture, we find that God is a demonstrator. And according to Second Chronicles 16, 9, he's always looking for people to demonstrate his power through. And I believe that everyone here could be one of those people along with us. This is not just the Mitch and Sharon show, because we can't do it by ourselves. There's no way, it would take a lot of seed. And Oral Roberts said, 
if God tells you to build a building, dig on and then sow a seed. So we've got a lot of seeds we need to sow to make this um, project happen. But we thank you so much for being a part today. And we are so thankful for this great location, this beautiful property. It's absolutely perfect, we think, and it's a God thing. And thank you to Pastor Kelvin Page for all that he has done to be supportive, and our pastor, Pastor Dr. Mark Williams. He has always gone above and beyond to care for our boys and love them and let Brandon preach and Jonathan lead worship, not in a regular service. <laughs> That would be very frightening. But he purposely has arranged several special times for them to do what they do and what they enjoy doing. And, and Pastor, we just can't thank you enough. So, And we have the most wonderful board to lead in this project that we could ever have. And we appreciate and love every one of them. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. I'm just going to say that moving forward, it's a faith journey. Um, you know, six years ago, I could have gone to a church and had a good congregation there that would, you know, be supportive. Don't have that today. So what we have is God, and we have a stellar board, and we have leadership in this community but if we catch the vision of what needs to be done, what will happen is it will come in. And so in your packet, you'll have the story right there. I didn't read it, but this is how it started uh, several years ago. And uh, Ron Ogle, a year and a half ago, and his wife Betty were uh, at the, what's the name of the restaurant? Chop House at Tanger Outlet Mall. Sharon and I had gone up for a couple of days of rest. and. And it was December, it was cold, we're by the fireplace, we're halfway through the meal, and I looked over, and this guy was looking at me. I didn't know him, and I kind of nodded and started turning my head and said, excuse me, would you be Pastor Mitch Maloney? I said, yeah, who would you be? <laughs> and so then he told me, and then I recognized the name, and I knew that Betty was on the care board for the Church of God Home for Children. And uh, this ministry that we're doing is faith-based. Uh, it's not labeled Church of God, but you know what? We're, we're going to... Take people who have needs and, uh, you know, that we can help them. And we can only take a certain number, but we're going to do a counseling center. And with the counseling center, we can touch literally hundreds and thousands of people over a period of years. We went to one doctor at one point. He said he had several hundred autistic patients. We're not just taking autism, Down syndrome, other similar things. And uh, so, but we'll uh, explain more of that later. Uh, we have an interim office, which is over where Forward and Faith used to be uh, on Guthrie Drive. And uh, so that's where our office is for now. But as soon as we can, we're going to start uh, moving dirt here. But we have to raise money first. And so we are going to need help with that. So you read through it and look through all the information. That's all I'm going to say about money. But, you know, having this turnout today, and, and Leslie from Channel 3 News is here today. We're, we're glad for them as well as Steve Hartline sending his people. But we're going to move right on with the program. So here we go. Good morning, everyone. It is such an honor to be here this morning. This is such a meaningful project, and I am just thrilled to be able to be a part of it. I'm not exactly sure how it happened that I am in this position of being the budget chairperson, but um, that's the job everybody wants, right? <laughs> but it just means that I get to coordinate how we pay to build this facility, as well as subsidize the cost once it's complete to make it as affordable as we possibly can for our residents as well as their families. As you can imagine, the task ahead of us is great. On the front end, we need to raise about $5 million just for phase one construction. But regardless of the magnitude, we serve a God that can move mountains. And he is so much bigger than all of our needs. So I stand here today confident that we can raise the money to construct the building as well as operate for years to come. With God's direction and with all of your help, we will be able to fulfill the dream that the Lord planted in Pastor Maloney and Sharon's hearts years ago. And that is to have a facility in this community that meets the needs of those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. There is no doubt that the need is great 
but again, we serve a God that is so much greater. As budget chair, I want to assure you that every dollar that is given to this project will be used wisely and be covered in prayer. As they mentioned, the Maloney's cover everything in prayer and we are following right with them on that. Um, we don't exactly see the end of how this is all gonna work out yet, but God had a plan before he ever birthed this project into their hearts. He saw the end before the beginning. So I just wanna thank you in advance, first of all, for your prayers, but also for your financial support. And with your generosity and with God's favor, this facility will be created to provide care for a community that is so near to his heart. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. When I visualized a ribbon cutting, I did not think that we would have a congregation. <laughs> but we have one. And it's wonderful. Thank you for being here. We are here to assist Mitch and Sharon Maloney in this momentous occasion for adult autism. And although they've been mentioned, I also want to mention Pastor Kelvin, we know his heart. When he pastored his previous church on 25th Street, they had the Ludic uh, Center there with Tammy Johnson. And then he became the director of Operation Compassion. And then he has a Montessori school going on now at this facility. Pastor, we know your heart, and thank you for allowing us to have this opportunity for adult autism. And I can't mention you without mentioning my, my pastor. He, on a number of occasions, have had the boys come to church and preach. Nobody knows that. They come and preach and lead singing, and they have a small congregation. But uh, he initiates that. And we know your heart also, Pastor. I know Ron Ogle's been mentioned, but one thing has not been mentioned. We traveled to Pigeon Forge with Paul and Tannis Duncan for the Jeremiah Conference. We've done that for the last six years. And during the time that we were there, that was in October, Ron Ogle was being honored at the Home for Children for his time, his talent, and Betty, his wife, both of them have been honored for his time and talent and also how they poured in financially on that occasion, on many occasions, for the Home for Children. So, Ron, we appreciate you coming from Sevierville. And we're here today because of his benevolence. It's already started. And we're going to reach the goal with God's help. We will reach the gold. Can you visualize here beautiful villages taking care of people who have specific needs for autism? What is autism? You know a little bit about autism, and I know a little bit about it. I know that it's a developmental a neurodevelopmental condition that you lose your skills, your attitude, and sometimes your communication. But you know, there are two people here that know an awful lot about autism because from the crib to 32 years of age, their sons, they've dealt with it on a daily basis. Well, they've carried that burden. And everywhere they go, they take the boys, just like Pastor Maloney said, they're up front with us. And they are. But God has helped them navigate through this problem for numerous years and has given them the grace and also the mercy for the boys as well as leading them in the right direction, and they have. How about this, boys? I want to tell you three things about the boys. Where are they? 
All right, you had your you had your hat on earlier, your your construction hat. You've taken that off. Okay, this is Jonathan, right? Jonathan over here and Brandon here. Well, they're the only guys I know that ask me a question, and then before I answer it, they've asked me four more questions. <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. And then, when we had the Holiday Inn up at the hotel, and the Maloney family was eating, and I heard the word, hey, Hughes, come here. <laughs> I looked over, and it was Brandon. And I said, yeah, Brandon. He said, get me a cup of coffee. <laughs> a cup of decaf is what he said, a cup of decaf. Well, what did I do? I got him a cup of coffee. <laughs> then I had the privilege of going to an awards day at Cleveland High School a few years ago. And I want to tell you, it was a blessing to see Jonathan and also Brandon receive awards. Brandon was given the award for most improved. And Jonathan was given the most coveted award that they gave that day, and that's the spirit of Cleveland High School. Both of them received two awards. I wish you could have seen them walk up and get those awards. Man, they put a trot on, and it was amazing. But how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to need a lot of help. And we're going to talk to individuals. We're going to talk to business people. We're going to talk to corporation leaders. And, and we are going to talk to many individuals that will give a monthly fee. So this is the way we're going to approach it. We already have the property. And we are grateful for that. Now we want to put up the villages. You know, God's been good to all of us. Yes. And everything we have, we owe to him. In fact, our homes, our cars, and any contents we have within that home, we owe to the Lord. Well, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about he's afforded us everything we have. You know what 1 Timothy says? 1 Timothy 1 and six says, we came in this world with nothing and we're gonna leave with nothing. So why not leave a legacy? Yes. Yes. Why not leave a memorial? Why not leave an imprint for something that will last for many years to come? In fact, I wanna tell you what the Message Bible says. The Message Bible said we came penniless and we are going to leave penniless. Pastor, I've been to a lot of funerals lately. You've had a lot. And I haven't seen any U-Hauls on the back of that hearse. <laughs> not even a suitcase with rollers. We're not taking anything with us. So not too long in the future, we're going to see the development starting here. And I want you to remember this date, the 6th of July, 2023. And we can all say, to God be the glory. Thank you. Amen. What a privilege it is to be here for an occasion like this. It has been a been several years of talking and uh, dreaming and looking at properties and uh, trying to figure out how we could network to make something happen. I know Barry Ray and I and uh, we got up on a cart one day and almost spent a full day just driving around looking at property and just seeing what could be done and the last minute I thought well let's bring Mitch over and just look at this back piece here and it was over. Uh, Mitch, Mitch said, this is it. So it's just been a, it's been a wonderful, wonderful dream. On behalf of Debbie and I, we're, we're just so excited and thrilled to be a part. 
And that's all this is. Uh, there's, there's nobody that needs to take credit for anything. We're, it's going to take a community effort to make this happen. And it's really about our kids. It's about our kids. Malachi 4.6 has been the driving passion of the campus that's been built out here, which says, let the hearts of the fathers turn to the children. Then the hearts of the children will turn back to the fathers. We feel this is just one more through networking and the power of networking, this is just one more component to seeing that vision fulfilled and that passion exercised in our community. So on behalf of Debbie and I, we'd just like to say thank you. Uh, the Westmore family would like to say thank you for the opportunity to partner together. I've been asked just to briefly share uh, for a moment about partnerships. A lot of things can happen. We can do so much more together than we can do individually. I've, I've, I've learned that the hard way. When we work together, we can see amazing things take place. And one way the Westmore family would like to partner are some ways that we potentially, and I have to emphasize potentially because we've got to build this road out literally as we go. But some things that we want to put under consideration is, is food. We have a food service, food uh, kitchen uh, administrators and a food ministry. There may be ways that we can partner there and offset uh, some things and have them create win-win situations. That's the best way to do it, when you can create some win-win situations. We've also not only talked about food, but we've talked about farming. There's 30 acres just across the, 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 green, the, the, the creek here and the green bridge, and there's 30 acres of excellent farmland. Now again, that's just potential, just talking, dreaming together. We want you to dream with us. You know, not, we're not just sitting behind drug closed doors dreaming by ourselves, we want you to dream with us. So 30 acres of farming, and perhaps community farming, and doing what we can do to take care of places like the autism campus. That's a lot of vegetables. We've studied, high, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, hydroponic uh, farming. I say we studied, and I can't even think of the name. <laughs> But one boxcar can produce 25 acres of fresh vegetables a year. One boxcar. Multiply that by 10 boxcars, that's 250 fresh vegetables a year. Why can't we do something like that to take care of the autism campus and the assisted living and offset housing costs and do those kinds of things? So food and farming and then our facilities. We want to be able to partner and share with uh, facilities. We're getting ready to build an amphitheater. I can see that being used. Facilities up here, if you have meetings, events, those kind of things, have at it. We're in partnership together and do our best to work together. Got to know the Maloney's um, years ago in Michigan. We were just youngins. And uh, I've always valued them. And then upon coming to Westmore and their being at North Cleveland, what a wonderful relationship we had through the years. And um, we're thankful for that. In fact, Jonathan and uh, Brandon got to spend most days in my house for two or three years. I think Kyle watched them, my middle son. So they were at our dinner table. Then I'd get talked in to go out and play basketball with them uh, before my knees went bad. And we had a, they can beat me now, but we had a lot of, a lot of fun. And I won't tell you some of the stories. We don't have time, but we, we grew to love one another very, very much. Lastly, I would talk about potential partnership with Operation Compassion. I have the privilege of of leading two wonderful, beautiful organizations that are part of our family. And Operation Compassion, we're dreaming of building some warehouses out on 51.8 acres we built up there, or, or we bought up there on uh, Fort Lauderdale Highway. And what we want to do, it's a nonprofit, we want to take some of the profits out of those warehouses and use them to help our care division. For you that are part of our movement, you know there's a care division there and uh, I don't have time to list all of them, but we could also help the autism campus. Raising money for buildings, I have discovered, is not that difficult. And I don't mean that to be coy or you, you understand. Everybody wants to give for buildings and pulpits and those kind of things. Operational budgets are difficult. They're extremely difficult. So if we can build out a system to where we can take profits from something like warehousing, and uh, I'm not prepared to say how much, but I am prepared to say that we would be committed to trying to help uh, a sustainable situation where we can continue to help the operational budget cost that it will take to make something like this happen. And so we say to God be the glory. Thank, thank, thank you, Mitch and Sharon, for your vision. We're just happy to be a part of it. And to the board, uh, wow, what a privilege it is to work with a group of people like this. And it takes partnerships with churches. It takes partnerships with people and business to make things happen. And I just say to God be the glory. We're excited. Amen.
I would like for uh, Reverend Brandon and Jonathan Maloney, if they'll come and stand on either side of me, please. Now, as we prepare for the ribbon cutting and the groundbreaking ceremony, let us pray. Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, giver of every good and perfect gift, how can we say thanks for the things that you have done for us? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for us. The voices of a million angels could not express our gratitude. All that we have or ever hope to be, we owe it all to thee. On this sixth day of July in the year of our Lord, 2023, we thank you for this land given for the construction of Real Life Village. Before it was ours, it was yours. And even though property deeds may register it otherwise, we declare that it is still yours. The gold is yours, the silver is yours, the cattle on a thousand hills is yours, the earth is yours, and the fullness thereof. And that includes this land. May this land never cease to be holy ground. With every turn of dirt, may those who labor and build here be anointed by the Holy Spirit. May the same Holy Spirit that came upon Bezalel, Aholiab, and those who were wise-hearted for the construction of the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant, may the same Holy Spirit that came upon Joshua, son of Jozadak, and Zerubbabel for the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, may the same Holy Spirit that is upon Jonathan and upon Brandon Maloney be upon those who will take part in the construction of these facilities. For except the Lord build the house, we labor in vain who build it. You have heard the cry of your people. You have seen their tears. You know their sorrow. Now you have come down to call us to become your heart, hands, and feet, to bring help, hope, and healing to families whose daughters and sons you love. With Nehemiah, we pray, Lord, strengthen our hands. May the good hand of the Lord be upon us. May he make permanent the work of our hands. We commit this project to you. We commit ourselves to you for its completion, and we look forward in the months to come to stand here once again to lift up our Ebenezer and declare the Lord was on our side. Now confident that you who have begun this work in us will carry it on to completion, we declare that yours is the kingdom, that yours is the power, that yours is the glory now and forever. Amen and amen. We're going to do two things real quick. We're just going to take some shovels out here, those that are going to help do that. If there's three shovels there, if you'll come and take the shovels. Um, I talked to some before here, so yeah, Ron, if you'll go, I'm going to be at one. And Travis, yeah, and my wife. <laughs> 